Hello and welcome back. Today, we're diving into a common topic which is fever. In this video, we will be discussing on the definition of fever, the classification, the common causes, and how to approach a patient with fever. Let's get started. Let's first recognize the normal body temperature. The normal body temperature is approximately 37. Any increase above 37.5 is termed as fever. Therefore, the definition of fever is increase in body temperature above the normal circadian range. Fever is a sign that your body is trying to fight foreign substances. There are two different classification of fever. One method of classification is based on temperature and the other method is based on the duration of fever. Let us first study the classification based on temperature. In this method, fever can be classified as low-grade fever which is 37.3 to 38.0 degrees Celsius. Moderate fever is between 38.1 to 39.0 degrees Celsius while high-grade fever is anything above 39.1 to 41 degrees Celsius. According to National Institute of Health, there is another class which is termed as hyperthermia. It occurs when your body temperature is above 41 degrees Celsius. The second classification is based on duration. It is commonly classified into intermittent, remittent, sustained or relapsing. In intermittent fever, your body temperature falls to normal each day. In remittent, your body temperature falls but does not return to normal. In sustained, you are having persistent fever without any diurnal variation. In relapsing, you will be febrile in short period of time that occur between one or several days of normal body temperature. The advantage of classifying fever via the duration is that you can narrow down the causes much easier than classifying fever based on temperature alone. For example, if a patient comes with persistent fever for few days without any diurnal variation, you can think of typhoid or typhus. Now, let's talk about the possible causes of fever. There are various causes of fever but I will be listing the common ones. It is easier to remember the causes after you classified the big category cause. For example, I would classify the big causes into infection, malignancy, autoimmune, drug-induced and other causes. Let me know in the comments below what other classification of causes that you know. Under the umbrella of infection category, the examples are upper respiratory tract infection, urinary tract infection or COVID-19. Under malignancy, maybe you can remember leukemia, lymphoma, malignant histiocytosis or metastasis of liver and bone cancer. Under the category of autoimmune, you can remember SLE, vasculitis, and giant cell arthritis. Under drug-induced, any drug is potential to cause fever. Some example of drugs include penicillin, sulfonamides and cephalosporin. Other causes may include things like heat stroke, acute hemolysis or silicosis. The point is, there are many causes and it is very important for the doctor to conduct investigation and direct the treatment based on the clinical suspicion. That is the message here. For example, in my country, dengue is endemic. So anyone comes with fever more than three days, the first thing is to diagnose dengue. So, I will do the necessary investigation to diagnose dengue. Do you understand me? Let me give you another example. Nowadays, COVID is a pandemic, so it is important to do conduct swab test for this individual to catch the coronavirus. The important message is you as a doctor needs to keep the causes of fever at your fingertips. First try to remember the common ones, then by experience, you will start to remember the rare ones. Let me illustrate how you would approach fever case when a patient comes to you in the outpatient clinic. For example, a patient comes to you with the complaint of fever for four days. What is your first step in this situation? The first thing to do is to ask more probing question while keeping the causes in mind. You asked more questions and found out that he also had severe vomiting and diarrhea, pain in the abdomen and also has rashes all over the trunk. This patient also states that he lived near forest area and his housing area is endemic for dengue. My question is what is the very first thing that comes into your mind? If I am in that situation, I would think of dengue fever. What is my next step in this situation? My next step is to conduct dengue serology test and full blood count. A common VIVA question in exam is you must know the rationale of conducting the investigation. 
For example, your examiner can ask you, why do you want to do a full blood count? Write your answer below in the comments. Let us say that you have confirmed that the cause of fever in this patient is dengue, so, what is your next step as a doctor? Your next step is to provide the correct treatment. Remember, your treatment plan is always based on the diagnosis. In dengue, you may prescribe medications such as acetaminophen to reduce fever and intravenous fluid. Sometimes, hospital admission is warranted. Let us say patient is fit to stay at home, what you would advise the patient. Remember, it is your responsibility to provide guidance on how to manage fever at home and monitoring of symptoms. You can advise the patient to drink plenty of fluids like water, broth, and juices to prevent dehydration. You can also advise the patient to get enough rest so that your body can fight the infection. You can also prescribe sponging, use a damp sponge or cloth to cool down the body, especially on the forehead area. Usually I will advise such method if the patient is children. That is all for this video. Please remember the key message that is the steps to diagnose fever in clinical setting and your investigation and management should point towards that particular direction. And also many doctors forgot on how to guide patient in home. Remember some of the important measures which I shared in this video. As usual please give thumbs up, comment and subscribe if you find this video useful. You can request your biology or medicine topics via the Google form that is linked in the description below. I have linked awesome medical notes that you can purchase via the link below. Thank you and see you all in the next video.